All right, guys, so next, it is important to note which cannabis method of intake that you're going to be using. These are called the routes of administration, and they are not created equal. And what I mean by that is that because each of these routes are inherently different, they're going to be affecting us differently too. This may not be as obvious to new patients, at least when they're first starting out. After some trial and error, aka the good old experience, yes, they'll understand, but this video should help you reduce or completely prevent those errors from occurring. What's going on, y'all? This is Dr. Andrioni from Cannabis Doctors of Florida. So tip number three is gonna be about the routes of administration. We're gonna talk about what routes are available, the onset times, the pharmacology of each route, some pros and cons to each route. And then we'll touch on some basic principles at the end. All right, so let's jump right in. So what kind of routes do we have available for patients in the Florida market? We have flour, we have inhalation, we have oral mucosal, we have oral and edibles. We also have topicals, and then there are suppositories, but they're not available. There are a couple things to consider before starting any route of administration. It's important to understand the following for each route. What is the onset time for that route? How long will that route affect us or the duration of action? Is this route titratable? What do we expect to feel from this route? As you'll see, all these features are different depending on the route that you choose. Okay, so let's talk about the time of onset. This pharmacologic property is based on absorption or how the THC enters our body. Factors influencing absorption are our cannabis use pattern, uh, genetic variations in like the liver enzymes, the route of administration itself, a bunch of stuff. So anything smoked or inhaled is gonna have a rapid onset time, generally within like two to five minutes, if not sooner. And this is because in this form, THC is rapidly absorbed into the bloodstream via our lungs and then goes straight to the brain. This is a double-edged sword though, because of this rapid acceleration of THC into the blood you're also more likely as a new patient to maybe experience some side effects or THC intoxication. This route may not be the best to treat certain conditions, especially when THC intoxication can make the symptom worse. For example, anxiety. All right, anything ingested orally like edibles makes its way down to the GI tract, but this takes some time. And as a result, they'll have a much more delayed onset time, especially when compared to smoking. Generally, the onset time can vary between 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Like we said, this kind of depends on the person and what they ate and all that stuff. But regardless, this is gonna take longer to kick in. And this is because after the edible is ingested, it starts to hang out and break down in our stomach. From there goes to the small intestine, gets absorbed into the blood. From there, it's a straight shot to the liver. This process takes about like 30, 45 minutes. Once it gets metabolized to the liver, then we're gonna to start to really feel the effects. I should stop here and say this. It is important to note, as a new patient, if you're taking an edible and you don't feel anything within the first 30, 45 minutes or an hour, I would advise against taking any more just wait it out. If nothing happens, then the next day, take a little bit of a stronger dose, but do not add it because I promise you the effect will compound and you'll feel it later and you're gonna be high as... So for the oral mucosal route, like tinctures, mints, lozenges, or anything absorbed via the mucosa, the time of onset generally takes longer than the smokable or the inhaled route, but takes shorter than the edible route. By virtue of this route, you're putting the liquid under your tongue to absorb into the mucosa. That can take anywhere from five to 15 minutes. This is user dependent. If you're not holding the liquid in under your tongue or in the mucosa properly or for a long enough time and then you just swallow it, then it's gonna act like an edible. This route is unique because once it's absorbed into the blood, it goes to the brain. It doesn't go to the liver. So this bypasses the first pass effect, just like smoking does. So what about topicals? We wanna to divide these up into two groups, the short acting and the long acting. The short acting can be anything from creams, lotion, balms, salves, roll-ons, those kinds of guys. And then the long acting is generally the transdermal patches. The time of onset tends to be pretty fast, like within 15 to 30 minutes. I don't know if you guys realize, but our skin is a huge organ and is a great way to absorb medication. And the great thing about topicals is that you don't get high. You'll feel the effect. It's great for localized control, but you don't have to worry about getting high. Okay, so now that we've covered the time of onset, let's talk about the duration of action. For anything inhaled, the duration of action is gonna be relatively fast, like within two to four hours. If you're more comfortable with cannabis, this can even shorten down to like one to two hours. And because of this, anything smoked or inhaled is easily titratable. All right, so then what about the oral mucosal route? The duration of action is gonna be much longer, especially when compared to smoking. This is more similar to like the edible route duration of action, which we'll get into in a second. But for new users, these effects can last anywhere from four to eight hours. In more comfortable users, this can shorten down to about three to six hours. For edibles, capsules, the drink mixes and the like, the duration of action is super long. Depending on how sensitive patients are, this can almost last all day. So I'd say like in new users that are sensitive, this can be anywhere from five to 10 hours. And more comfortable or more experienced users, this can generally last four to eight hours. Once Delta 9 THC is processed in the liver, it's metabolized to the more potent 11-hydroxy THC. 
This guy's three to seven times more potent at the CB1 receptor. And this is generally why we feel the effects much longer when we do eat edibles. The effects are often stronger too, but unlike inhalation, these kind of creep up on you like slow and steady. So you don't really realize until like an hour in. So I guess regardless of the route, it's always better just to start low and go slow if you're not sure. And lastly, for topicals, the duration of action can vary. The short acting generally lasts up to six hours. The transdermal patches can last anywhere from one to three days. Since we're here, let's talk about suppositories. The onset times and the duration of effects for suppositories act similarly to the oral mucosal route, so like tinctures and things. Just like with the tinctures, you're allowing the medication to absorb directly into the mucosa. This time, it's just a different mucosa. Like I said before, you can't really find these in the dispensaries in Florida, but you can make your own. So let's talk about some basic principles that I like to follow. For chronic conditions or symptoms, long-acting oral preparations are generally the mainstay of treatment. Many patients do well with CBD during the day, and this is really to promote alertness and reduce impairment while getting the effects they need. And then we stick to THC dominant preparations in the evening if we need to. On the flip side, for infrequent, episodic, or intermittent symptoms that kind of just arise randomly, short-acting preparations such as the inhalation or smoking or even the tinctures can be more appropriate for these kinds of guys. Short-acting preparations like these can also be used for exacerbations of symptoms or for breakthrough symptom control. When using it for breakthrough symptom control, I always recommend to use the minimal effective dose. And then kind of like we stated before, topicals are great for localized symptom control without any psychoactivity. It's also a good idea for patients to keep a symptom inventory chart just to follow the progress of these symptoms. See which strains don't work, see which strains do work. Also using the certificate of analysis when predicting the effects of those strains is gonna be super helpful too. And we'll get into that in another video soon. All right guys, so to summarize, there's about five or six different routes to choose from. If you don't like to smoke, there's also the ingestibles or the topicals as well. The time of onsets and the duration of actions will vary, but they follow a pattern. Rapid onset tends to also have a shorter duration of action, whereas the delayed onsets tend to have a longer duration of action. The intensity of the effects that you're gonna feel is really based on how fast the THC gets into our blood. So I like to give this example for patients. When you smoke anything, it's the rapid acceleration of THC into the blood that causes the high. And because of this, you're more likely to get high as a new patient. Then let's compare this to the mints at Sertera and Move. It's a five milligram one-to-one -one mint. So basically two and a half milligrams CBD, two and a half milligrams THC. This kind of resembles Sativex like almost perfectly. Uh, anyway, just like any other mint, you're gonna be sucking on it. So that slow and steady release of THC into the blood, yes, it will provide you with the relief that you need, but it's not necessarily gonna get you high it's the rapid onset of THC into the blood that gets you high. Or I guess for edibles, it's just too much or that more potent metabolite, 11 hydroxy THC. And then more on this, short acting preparations are great for intermittent or episodic or exacerbation of symptoms, whereas long acting oral preparations are better for more preventive and baseline symptom control. I hope this helped. I'll see you next time.